Welcome to the SEI Podcast Series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts. Hi, my name is Dina Schick, and I'm a threat analyst on the vulnerability analysis team within the CERT Coordination Center. Today, I'm joined by two of my colleagues, Art Mannion and Jonathan Spring, and we're going to be talking to you today about improving the Common Vulnerability Scoring System, sometimes called CVSS for short. Welcome, Art and Jono. Thanks, Dina. Yep, thank you. So let's start off by just, just telling everybody what we do, and I'll start. Um, my name is Dina Schick. I've been a member of the technical staff here at CERT for the last five years. I started off doing threat intelligence analysis and have transitioned onto the vulnerability analysis team under Art Mannion. I typically focus on vulnerability response processes and understanding the entire ecosystem of some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. All right. So uh, um, I'm currently the technical manager of the vulnerability analysis team. Uh, I've been here almost 18 years. Uh, lots of coordinated vulnerability disclosure. And um, part of that is always uh, how bad is this vulnerability, right? There are maybe, we're counting like 20,000 a year. So, um, and CVSS is sort of at least notionally designed to help answer that question. Uh, so this work in CVSS is an out, uh, um, sort of an output of all of this coordination work over the years. Um, anyway, that's what I focus on, and CVSS is one of the uh, one of our hot topics right now. John, uh, I work mostly. Well, I started my work at the SEI in 2009. Um, I was doing largely network forensic stuff, uh, a lot of DNS. Um, but in addition to the information security uh, background that I have, I studied some philosophy of science stuff. And um, what that comes down to is essentially evaluating the quality of evidence and how to make sure that you're making good decisions based on what evidence you have. Um, and I think that to some extent, that's really the, I've, I've applied that to a lot of different situations, threat analysis, network analysis. Uh, vulnerability analysis, and I think that that's a clear part of talking about CVSS, right, and trying to evaluate what kind of evidence it gives you and what sort of evidence you need to make a good decision there, uh, or whether you're making decisions, I suppose, is one of the things we'll be talking about. But yeah, that's how my background plays in here. Awesome. So could you guys give me a little bit of a history of CVSS? I had to look it up to be sure, but uh, it goes back to 2005. Uh, and so V1, version 1, came out in 2005. Um, shortly after that, uh, the start of CVSS, it was um, transitioned into uh, the organization called FIRST, which is the Forum of Incident Response and Security Teams. Uh, and within FIRST, there are special interest groups. Um, CVSS is operated and developed out of a special interest group within FIRST. So um, 2005, version 1, moved into FIRST. 2007 is when version 2 came out. Uh, and there was a, a longer period of time, 2015, uh, version 3 came out. And there have been sort of incremental changes to how CVSS works at these different uh, revisions, but s fundamentally it's always sort of been the same, uh, the same uh, construct, so to speak. Um, actually, very recently, 3.1 just came out in 2019, um, with some all, also some minor, uh, minor additions and changes. Um, so that's sort of the history. It's been it's been around for a while. Uh, it's been adopted in a number of places, notably the NIST National Vulnerability Database uses CVSS, uh, and a lot of U.S. government and other folks rely on this score um, for their vulnerability prioritization purposes, which is what we're going to get into uh, a little bit further. Can either of you describe how CVSS works? Well, I can try. Um, CVSS asks for a number of qualitative inputs, like um, the, the severity, well, it's trying to calculate the severity of some particular technical vulnerability to the technical system. 
Um, I think depending on exactly how you think about it, the, the goal is either to output a number between 0 and 10 or to output a category low, medium, high, or critical. The way that you get to those numbers, because you get to the numbers, is that you answer well, 10 or so questions. There's some modifications based on whether you're doing it and what they call an environmental score, but let's talk about the, the base score. Um, you ask, so it asks some questions such as, you know, what's the confidentiality, confidentiality impact on the system or the information on the system from this flaw getting exploited? You can say low, medium, or high. Um, you do that several times for these different questions. So that's just the base score. Can you go into what the temporal and environmental metrics of CVSS might be? Sure. So, you know, to Jono's point, they're, they're these vectors are these questions they are asked. There's a small handful for the base. Temporal adds some additional questions uh, or vectors. They are uh, more related to things that well, temporal are related to things that change over time. So I think something about um, uh, confident, uh, confidence in the report might be part of temporal um, exploit information, mm -hmm. maybe threat information is about temporal. And there's a third category, there's a third section, environmental, which uh, in version three is basically take the base questions and re-answer them for your specific uh, environment. Um, there's a big change between version two and three in environmental. Mm -hmm. um, we still score version two at CERT CC because the, the version two environmental better suits how we um, are trying to use CVSS. Which organizations are using CVSS and why? Are there different communities of groups that are using CVSS differently? Well, uh, I had mentioned we have the, the US government use, right? So NIST, uh, NVD is putting out CVSS scores uh, and there's a long sort of, um, a lot of users sort of keying off of, of the NVD and CV uh, NVD's scores. A number of um, software vendors also produce, provide scores, mm -hmm. which sometimes agree with NIST and sometimes do not, which is a fun area of conversation uh, as well. Um, other groups, I'm not sure we're, we're aware of uh, who else might be using So it. the payment card folks. Oh, yes. Uh, the pay, so the payment card industry, PCI, right. yeah. yep. they have a security standard for making sure basically that you're allowed to process credit card information, mm -hmm. and they attach... Uh, requirements to how quickly you respond to vulnerabilities based on the CVSS score right. to maintain a certification to process payment card information. Right. Um, different people have different amounts of requirement for for those things. I mean, Dina, you probably know some of the people who are in the, the SIG for what sort of groups are represented there. So the special interest group, the CVSS special interest group is who modifies and updates the standard. There are several patch developers and patch appliers that join together to create what we understand as CVSS. We actually just wrote a paper, our team just wrote a paper entitled Towards Improving CVSS that we're going to talk about here shortly. So with that, let's talk about a couple of the drawbacks of CVSS. What are some problems that we've noted in our paper that you want to discuss? And what are some real world impacts of those problems? Sure, so um, uh, we've covered this already a little bit, but this, the, the um, the mandated or nearly mandated use by federal government uh, and by the payment card industry um, sort of has this well, implication, if not a, a requirement, to use it. You know, there's this this message that the base score, um, that number, or actually actually gets reduced to the category, the high, medium, low, critical, that is sufficient for your prioritization or your risk or your severity decision, and you're done. It came out as a 7.7, .7, which is a high. Maybe you're a medium, I'm not sure. That's high. That's high. And you can stop thinking, process it according to the rules. That's, 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 that's great. It's very simple, but it's not realistic whatsoever. So whether it's mandated or implied that this is a, a good methodology, um, that is one of the sort of general problems um, that I see. The CVSS SIG is very careful, especially in the 3.1 new language, to say that CVSS is not risk and you're supposed to bring more input to the table before you decide to take action on a vulnerability based on the CVSS score alone. However, 
um, the what decade plus of use has resulted in this uh, almost misapplication of it as the only score you'd ever need. Do you have anything you'd like to add, Jono? Well, Dean, as you know, there's uh, a whole bunch of things that you could get into. I think that it's very important, this idea that the CVSS SIG is uh, very clear that they want to have this be about severity and not about vulnerability prioritization. Um, but if people do, in fact, want vulnerability prioritization, then I think that's one of the things that would need to be addressed with improving CVSS. Um, there's some other pretty important things about just the way that the scoring is done, um, which we talk about a fair amount in the paper. Um, without getting into too many of the, the details, which I think is hard to follow listening, um, but I would encourage people to look at the paper. Uh, basically, they suggest that they have done this scoring and that they got some experts into a room, rank ordered some vulnerabilities by which ones were most severe, and then made some sort of regression equation that matched that, and now you plug in the numbers and then it does that. And at the very least, uh, we don't actually have very many details on how those people were selected, how those vulnerabilities were selected, uh, and how we're sure that they did a good job, basically. They may well have done. I think that in general they're smart people, and so they probably did. But we don't have any access to that, and I think that's sort of a problem. And the second thing, which Art alluded to when he said that it's the the decisions are reduced to the categories, mm. right? In the document where first specifies the first the CVSS SIG says what they are doing, um, you know, they say that the scores were to be accurate to within 0.5 oh. units. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of uh, whatever within, like when they did the, the equation, um, which means that if you get uh, seven, according to the SIG's own documents, a seven is medium. Right. Because it's the borderline between high and medium. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right. But if it's accurate within 0 0.5, that means it's actually somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5 which means that it's a 50-50 chance of being uh, high, high or yeah. medium. And that's not super helpful if what you want to know is the category. So I, have, I think that there's some real questions about how those categories get assigned out of the numbers and that sort of a thing, Yeah, which seems difficult. Um, a little bit of my experience of being a member of the CVSS SIG since our team has been working within the SIG to go over some of the things in the paper is that CVSS does not necessarily do a good job of scoring severity for things that are not traditional IT systems. So like safety critical systems, um, some of the things that are going on, some of the discussions that are happening for FDA within FDA that maybe some medical devices cannot be applied, CVSS can't be applied to those medical devices. Are there any other sectors that you see that can't use CVSS appropriately? We, you've covered medical device, but um, the medical device sector uh, um, has been um, voicing concerns that CVSS is not sufficient for their use. Mm -hmm. uh, the industrial control system sector, same story. Uh, and one of the arguments I hear a lot is, you know, there's this discussion of confidentiality, availability, uh, integrity, mm -hmm. got in the wrong order, of information. Mm -hmm. But what about safety, right? Medical devices, um, control systems, we're talking about there are physical safety concerns and does CVSS account sufficiently for that? That's one of the questions both of those sectors have, have raised up. There has definitely been work uh, in the uh, medical device space to try to um, adapt um, CVSS for use in the medical space. Uh, MITRE has some work mm -hmm. in that area. Um, there's been lots of uh, concern expressed by the ICS community, uh, but I'm not sure of any um, specific work on a, a variant or a, a new standard or something else um, for their, for them, so, yeah. So we've been talking a little bit about our paper that we wrote, but we have also been trying to be a little bit more forward-looking within our team. So can CVSS be fixed? And if so, what measures are we recommending to fix that problem? Well, Dina, I'm not sure. Whether it can be fixed partly depends on what people want it to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But can we make an adequate vulnerability prioritization scheme? 
I think so. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether it will be CV CVSS or not. Could be. Um, I think that the start of that, as we've been discussing, is that if we want to model decisions, we should model decisions and not severity. Yeah, um, you know, we're, we're SIG members. You've mentioned this. Um, even when we wrote our paper, somewhat critical of CVSS, we did that. We, we, we um, gave the SIG some advanced warning and, and circulated some drafts with them for comments. Um, so the question as to whether what we work on is something that happens or ends up working out within the SIG or not is open, I think, at this point. Um, I just mentioned that uh, they just released 3.1, mm -hmm. and there is now discussion in the SIG of the next um, sort of period of work to take on, uh, aiming at a 4.0 release, and that may be a significant amount of work. Um, so one question we'll have um, and ask within the SIG is, um, how much appetite or, or willingness is there to make significant changes in CVSS? Mm -hmm. And I don't think we have the answer, but we're going to um, investigate within the SIG, and we will be um, working on our decision uh, modeling exercise with it, within or without the SIG. So, What do you think, Tina? I think it's good that the SIG is willing to understand how CVSS is being applied. We're finding that in a lot of different organizations, instead of CVSS being used only as a measure of severity, it's being used as a prioritization scheme. And that comes up, especially in the PCI discussions, that if you have a particular vulnerability with a particular severity, you have to do something with it or not. And it's based completely off of a score. And as we know, sometimes when given just a score from 1 to 10, it sometimes makes decisions a little bit too easy for people. So what do you... Can you go into a little bit more about decision modeling and how that would help alleviate some of these problems that we've been discussing? Sure. I think that one of the things is picking the right uh, pieces of information to make the decision based on. Mm -hmm. We have a hypothesis that, for example, uh, whether something is, whether a vulnerability is being exploited is, whether or not something is being exploited has a lot of information in it, right. and that that's an important thing to use. Um, I think that this is actually supported by some work at Weiss, the workshop on the economics of information security that actually Sasha Romanowski and some of his colleagues put out doing some other modeling. You know, I don't know whether that was in response to our paper in January or not, but um, seems supported by, by some of that. Um, so the gist of it is that what I, I think that we should, I think that what we're going to suggest is that instead of going from um, categorical answers to some questions, like is it being exploited, two numbers, back to a category. Mm -hmm. We're just going to go from category to decision with a, a, a model called a decision tree. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try to keep them small enough that everyone can understand the whole tree and why each branch and each decision is there the way that it's there with some clear, argued, supporting evidence, which is what we're working on producing a very like comprehensive, clear, transparent set of we think that you should decide on safety first mm -hmm. and then decide on whether it's being exploited. And then if those two things are really bad, then you need to fix it now. And like that's all you really need to know. Or maybe you need to learn a little bit more about the deployment posture or how bad how, or maybe how severe it is. Right. Um, but we can plot that decision out in a sort of transparent way that's organized in such a way that it's intelligible and explainable to a person. Um, and I think that that's part of where the where it really needs to come in. Because if you're going to make a decision, yeah. I think you need to be able to explain why. And the decisions are different, right? If you're a patch developer or a patch applier or if you're dealing with a safety critical system. Yep. We are in the midst of a sort of an internal experiment to test out our initial thoughts on these decision trees um, from different points of view, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, roughly we plan on publishing um, our findings when we're, when we're ready. So there should be another, another paper in our series. And I think that, I mean, it's going to be a lot of work to test all of this out with the appropriate level of care. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, how uh, the entire software community is prioritizing which vulnerabilities to develop patches for and apply patches for is a fairly big piece of policy. Mm -hmm. I think that we should probably have appropriate available evidence for it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. So thank you, too, for joining us yeah, here thanks. today. I know that this is a passionate topic for all three of us that we like to discuss at different uh, conferences and with different folks, so hopefully we can continue that conversation. 
Art, Jono, myself, along with Alan Householder and Eric Hattelbach, have published a white paper towards improving CVSS in a blog post, which is on the CERT CC blog. And we will include all links to all resources mentioned in this podcast in our transcript. So again, thank you for joining us. Right, thanks. Thanks, Tina. Thanks, Jono. Yeah, thanks, Art. Thanks for joining us. This episode is available where you download podcasts, including SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. It is also available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts and the SEI's YouTube channel. This copyrighted work is made available through the Software Engineering Institute, a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. For more information about the SEI and this work, please visit www.sei.cmu.edu. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.